Christians are still deceived everywhere. You know, I, I know people don't like negativity, and I know they don't like doom and gloom. But, I mean, at least it's the truth. I mean, why? Why feed lies, lies to people? I know people aren't waking up out here. Like I've said before, and, and what's sad is I got a video, and I forgot this in the video. Seemed like it'd be a good thing to at least add if I'm going to make a long video talking about this stuff. Again, I've sit here and witnessed these videos that people have out here. And I've made comments, and the people that actually made these comments back to me that had these that had these TikTok, it was technically TikTok because not everybody from YouTube will comment back. Uh, but when these people that had a message as if they had a message from God were saying that I said that people needed to quit making it sound like that they could not lose salvation of course we're being saved these people were denying that a person could lose salvation of course like I said we're being saved so uh, that would almost have to practically mean that we didn't have salvation again I've never denied that a person could be saved in the moment if they were living for God but um, again Christians are deceived I mean God makes me a watchman around a year later driving truck over the road that God told me we could lose the Holy Spirit that proves that people are wrong that if a person did believe that they had salvation and they could not lose salvation, then that's not true at all. Um, again, you have to look at the lies out here that people preach. Past, present, future sin. Christ only forgave you for the sin up until you came to him. Yes, some sins can be overlooked because at the end of the day, somebody's going to have godly sorrow and God can and will look at the heart. But again, if a person's willfully sinning, habitual, hypocritical, unrepentant sin, then it's not going to work. People are deceived and the church was wrong. That means the people were wrong. Because evidently the church is the people, but the church is also the building. I know the church the Bible speaks of is the people. They're wrong. Again, COVID. What did people gain if they did turn to God during COVID? You hope they took the truth in. Oh, and let me not forget that the law, the law was never taken away. That's another thing the once saved preach. The law was never taken away. They preached that it was taken away. Not rightly dividing the word. What other? There's another one I left out also. But with these people, they have a message. Great message. Then when you find the, what they truly believe in is wrong then that means their whole message they weren't speaking for God I mean these pastors aren't out here speaking for God when they lie to people and preach a falsehood so how are these overnight crackerjack box theologians out here on YouTube again there's a reason why it says his people don't sin it's the conscience and it bears weight on them letting them know what they're doing is wrong most Christians out here don't have that but when you want to believe in a lie over the truth or turn a truth into a lie or not want to know the truth that's the consequence you know I've already seen God the la just, to, just today
of course, this whole time. Just my days haven't been good going back into a life of sin. Again, why would people out here want to listen to testimonies if they weren't ever li willing to listen to when I sit here and said that I get baptized by the Holy Spirit? I know exactly what it felt like. It felt like I, have, I was being convicted for five or six hours long and then roughly a month later ask God for forgiveness of my sins and I could feel the sins being taken away no different than when I was driving over the road and I even made a video right after it happened that I watched a TikTok video where this woman was speaking in tongues her daughter interpreted it and I felt these demons literally being lifted off of me same feeling would I say that that video could actually have been for me why not it sure did work I told other people where they could find the video. I just don't know how to title my videos and people don't like the truth. I've sit here and said. Again, in the past, I've sit here and admitted all the things that I've done. I haven't, I didn't have to admit. Oh, there's a couple of things I've left out. If people think that I've been all, all right with God, I haven't should have never done the things that I've done since 2015. But I'm the one that opened up the door to sins. But if it affects me and I witness all this, the Holy Spirit's helped me, then I know that the stuff that Christians are being preached out here are wrong. I cannot and I will not condole. I, I couldn't condole marijuana or any of these other things out here that alter and open up the doors to demons in your life. I know what it does to people. So I can't, I can't condole one sin. You know, there's times you tell people out here something, tell them that you sin. First thing they want to do, oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. I mean, that's the whole idea that God wanted people to have that armor. You let that armor go if you even had the armor when you're out here hanging around with sinners in the first place. Now I can see why the majority of the world out here is in sin that call themselves Christians. But at the end of the day, that's also being conformed to the ways of this world too. Because that's the same person except for calling themselves a Christian that's the same person they were they were in sin still in sin so again coronavirus what did people gain by that if there was a hundred people that came to the Lord um, the message they're getting from people out here isn't a good message there's no easy believism simply believing if no one was going to allow the Holy Spirit to help change their life or God if you know what I mean by that I'm saying bringing it up to God or witnessing the Holy Spirit trying to help someone saying I'm a sinner in need of a savior somebody's not going to allow that to happen then it's not going to happen praying a prayer if you're not going to allow that to happen it's not going to happen here's what one thing i've witnessed lately do you have to sacrifice something to be living for god a lot of people out here would say no but you've already seen yes because if you can't be conformed to this world and the father be of you, then that does mean 
you have to sacrifice. I know I'm already going to forget some of the stuff that I made in the earlier video, but I did not want to forget that even when people are out here making videos and you seem like they're the perfect Christian because they say the perfect things and then people out here believe what they say and then they sit here and preach a falsehood, you can discredit their whole entire message. Why do you think I bring up what's his name talking about in the past saying you could take the mark of the beast and ask God for forgiveness later? No one should ever have listened to him ever after he ever declared that unless he ever came out and ever apologized. If he led one person astray that way, then that person was never worthy of ever being listened to again. Does that even make sense to people out here? Well, I know one thing. People haven't quit listening to the guy. And you know that one musician that came out and was asked about homosexuality? Why, did the, why do people still act as if this person that was asked that question that never came out and told the truth that one opportunity why didn't that one why does everybody look up to that person as if that person is saved yet I've never seen a change in a person than that person website nothing about God music doesn't even sound like anything about God their whole persona doesn't even seem like anything of God. But yet, the majority of Christians out here listen to that person's music and think that person is of God. Doesn't make sense. And when I first saw that person's first video, when that person had their hair in a bundle when I saw the very first video because I was subscribed to that person and watching that person for at least a couple of years before that I never watched that video when they asked about homosexuality but I watched the very two first videos and I was like what is this what is this worldly so look at all the deceived Christians out here I don't care who's going to be our president right now. I don't care if it's overturned. I know this is the wicked generation. I know America can never be revived. I know God will eventually pull that plug. I know I've said this stuff before. I can't listen to people out here that make it sound like we got 10 years down the road. We ain't got 10 years. Spirit's been poured. We know the times are here. Again, so many people out here know the times were here. Still wouldn't know anything if they hadn't witnessed things going on. Why worry about a rapture? The majority of people are not going to get raptured because of being unrighteous in sin preaching the falsehoods themselves wicked in God's eyes this is a wicked vile world right now I don't care about any of the pastors out there I can tell you of another person, if I wanted to say names, that's been making videos on YouTube for the longest time that a lot of people watch this person's video, and this person believes you can't lose salvation. Again, if we're being saved, but with God telling me 
I don't know why people say things and don't mean it. At the end of the day, I'm going to say it again. Why tell people that God never changed when at the end of the day, right here, most people say God changed? Let me go to that. Very first scripture of the Bible is the... Uh, In beginning in Hebrew, Christ, a man would come and die on the cross for everyone by his own hands. The redemption process, very first scripture of the Bible. Even before it even talks about it in the Old Testament, even before the New Testament, God never changed. His stance on sin never changed. Christ being an advocate for people out here when they sin is because they confess of their sins and turn away from their sins, not because they maintain a life of sin. People are not rightly dividing this stuff, but how could they? They don't hate evil. There you go. If they, Evil in the wound, evil at youth. What were you doing at youth that made you evil in God's eyes? Evil is the very first synonym of wicked. If you Google synonym of wicked. And I've done this stuff since 2015. You have to hate evil for it to really be that you're fearing God and that you're going to be able to rightly divide because you're going to have wisdom and knowledge. And most people out here that just call themselves Christians don't hate evil. Oh, it's okay. But no one should be saying it's okay. If you say you sinned, that's part of the problem. Sin is the problem. Wickedness is the problem. Lawlessness is the problem. Right here in the church. I know I got thrown off there. Like I said, and I, um, yeah, God never changed. If he knew the redemption process from the very beginning of the Bible, then nothing ever changed. Christ dying on the cross gave us a way out through his blood if we came out of the darkness and into the light. It's right all there. If you're in the, if you're living for the flesh, you die. Spirit, you live. Salvation isn't granted to the wicked. So evidently salvation isn't granted to the sinner because it's the wicked that is the sin. It's the sin that's the wicked. Sodom and Gomorrah, why were they wicked? Because they were sinners. All I know is the church has let their guard down. The church, the people out here, the church, the people, have put more faith in what man has said, their interpretation. There's plenty of people out here that talk against these denominations, and they should very well. They're the ones leading the mass astray. I'm going to bring it up again. What Paul said, so I hope people can think about this. 
because I know that there are times when you read certain things in the Bible because I've heard things do things out there sound contradicting when John says that if you're in sin you're of your father the devil but yet Paul can say that if you believe the gospel that you're saved what Paul said did not overrule, overrule what John said let's get the story straight Again, Paul abstained from sin. People will disagree all day long with that. Even somebody said not long ago, the chief sinner thing. Well, that yeah, that's what he was doing before Christ manifested himself to him in his life, came into his life. Children of disobedience. Wouldn't you say that's the same as children of wrath? So, we know his actions were disobedient. It's no different than atheists. Atheists is the same thing. They're rebellion also. Evil and everything. The whole works. But, the disobedience. Now, I got thrown off there. I'm just hoping that someone will run across this video and you guys can put the pieces together. I hope people can. Because if you sit here and you say there's nothing wrong with sin, then basically you're saying it's okay to live for the flesh. It's okay to be lawless. It's okay to be a worker of iniquity. But yet those are future events. Just like when Jesus denies the wicked. It's a future event. So how did Christ take your future sins away? I've already said there's only one way Christ took your present and future sins, and that's if you turn away from him and come back. A lot of people have never even turned to God. That's why I say coronavirus how many people came to him with all the hypocrite Christians out here talking against repentance? The moral of repentance. Turning from your ways, turning to God. The book of Acts. Paul. Gentiles, repent. Repent. And that's repent of wickedness also in the book of Acts. Just like all over the Bible, two or three places, turning from your ways. Whoa, 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 wait. God never changed. No, he did not. Never compromise for anyone. I love to sit here and say that. So that way when people hear it, people realize God did never compromise for you and for not no one. Just like this pastor said the other day that at the end of the, at the, end of the day, God doesn't need you. Man, he doesn't need me. That's just so you drop your pride act. That the majority of Christians got out here. Again. I'm not the only one that said that repentance, the moral of it is turning from your ways and turning to God. But you got to turn from your ways before you can turn to God. It's just like you got to deny yourself before you can pick up the cross. 
And since I'll throw this in the video, since I'm trying to make a good video and throw everything out there, I started having a couple of days when I was sitting here seeing people trying to make excuses out here talking about that there's a difference between a Christian that believes and a disciple. There's no difference. And all you have to do is go look at one scripture, the one where he's told the disciples to make disciples of nations. He didn't say you'll go make a Christian here, a disciple here, a Christian here, a disciple here. It tells you you gotta deny, you gotta pick up the cross. But yet most people aren't denying self. Paul died daily and he crucified the flesh the one the one group of words that Christians don't bring up excuse me one person does and I know there are other people out there but at the end of the day they may preach that you can't lose salvation either how can someone say you can't lose salvation but but yet you got to crucify the flesh and yet Christians hate bringing up crucifying the flesh. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. I know it's tough to fight the temptation, deny self, fight the, uh, die to self, whatever. There's four of them there. I know it's tough. I know it's tough to submit. I know it's tough to, tough to surrender. I know it's tough to be humble. But that's where a lot of Christians lack. One minute I'm doing good. One minute I'm doing bad. Well, five minutes I'm doing bad. Maybe ten minutes. Maybe thirty. Can you kind of get the point? But others, it ain't even bothering them. So I might as well at least throw everything out there. I mean, I know I've made videos like this for the last five years where I've gone out and said all kinds of things. Most people still don't like it. I know people don't like the truth. I know one thing that I would have liked to have never made a video like this again after so many times of making them. You know, I, we don't, this crossed my mind the other day. I've sat here and told people that. But I remember when God first made me a watchman and I started witnessing all these things that God, that, that God, was, God was bestowing in me, telling me, and all these things. And I told him I'd never quit. But yet I've told people I, I wish I could never make another video like this. I don't think people realize in the last week or two how many times I've told God I'll never make another video like this. And yet I'm making another video today. Here's Wednesday. I made this video earlier today. It's 39 minutes long. I'm 28 minutes into this video. I made the video I just uploaded. It's all going to boil down to the same thing. The wicked. That's right. That's right. And you think that if God won't give somebody a delusion and a reprobate mind and them not think and them think that they're right with God, again, what makes everybody out here think that they're so special? Oh, that believing thing. Okay. Yeah. Now, like I said, if you're a disobedient, again, let's do some investigating, disobe um, unbelief in the Bible, they were believers. They knew of God. They were disobedient. And they were faithless. So hopefully you can put those pieces together. Saved by grace through faith, 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 faithless.
This is where Christianity is right now. Faithless. Godless. This is a godless nation, a godless world. So what? There's a few. Like I said, you grieve the Holy Spirit, God's your enemy. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. God never changed. God gave those people the Holy Spirit. I mean, I try to give people credit out here that when they turned to God, a lot of people did surrender their life and start living a certain life. And then they heard all these falsehoods out here and all the garbage being preached by our, all the overnight Cracker Jack box theologians. Well, I mean, people out here preaching to the church. Can you imagine it's been that bad for so long? See, that's why people can't, that's why people can't comprehend it. It's been this bad this whole time. In the church. Well, at least I found some people when I was out there on TikTok before I made some stupid comments that I should have never made. And I'm not going there and don't really even care. I care that I should have never messed myself up. Should have stuck around, but then there would have been a lot of heat and it would not have been worth it. That's the ignorance. You know, you got, I guess I should have zipped my lip. Actually, the person should have never taken it too personal. A lot of people out there would have known what I was talking about. But when you're talking to this generation of people and a stupid comment I did that I should have never made, it didn't go over too well. Shouldn't have been too personal then it wouldn't have been that way. But there's a lot of people out there that do have the truth. They know better. If God delivers people from sin, yep, some people do know better. that you can get to a point where you're living for God when you're out you're not out here being sinful but when you open up the door to Satan at every turn it ain't gonna work it ain't gonna work And yes, people do come up with kind of pretty stupid excuses. No one should ever bring up somebody that's on the cross next to Christ when Christ would read his heart. He knew he humbled himself, that the guy did. It's a lot different than the majority of Christians out here. Well, all I know is that I'm not going to get caught up in this garbage out here. I can see through the manipulation out here. I'm not going to get caught up in politics out here. 
nothing wrong if you want to keep up on what's going on around you, but that's not going to change anything. Prophecy is being fulfilled and it's not going to stop. Things are going to keep on happening until it gets to where. I just would not put everything on a pre-trib rapture, people. Going to be broken hearted. Especially when most aren't worthy. Again, three out of my five time confirmation was I'm just wondering if anybody's ever going to get raptured. And that was a confirmation that people were not going to get raptured. When I witnessed the 333s, three out of the five, uh, the three times I brought that up. Cannot be in sin. Again, those visions and dreams people had that got left behind and missed the rapture. What were they doing? They professed it in the videos. That just proves to you that people are wrong. Well, I might as well shut up because there's no use of me trying to talk people into it. It's either going to click or it's not going to click. I mean, people already know about God and stuff like that, so it's not necessarily like I'm talking to an atheist trying to get someone to come to God. It's just whether somebody's coming to the truth. I hope people do realize that. There is a little bit of a difference. I don't think I've missed anything. If people could ever come to the conclusion Paul abstained from sin, was no longer a child of wrath, Right there in Ephesians 2, 3. I mean, it's kind of strange that he would have three talks with three groups of people talking about how they could not do these sinful things. If they were, if they were, they were going to be wicked and unrighteous, depending on which Bible you looked at it. Of course, like I said, the NIV used to have the word wicked. Now it says wrongdoer, Mandela effect. The King James says unrighteous tells you right there what the wicked and unrighteous and the wrongdoer the lawless that's what they do and those are sinful deeds and um, I'm thinking that if, if, if Paul understood that that you couldn't do those things then I'm pretty darn sure he wasn't doing those things And then to even bring, and then some. So basically he knew that it wasn't just what he brought up there in Ephesians, Galatians, and, uh, well, even the book of Revelations has a little list of things also, but... People don't inherit the kingdom unless they turn from their ways. It's just the truth. It's man that's lied. Well, I think I've done enough in this video. But I don't, like I said, I don't know why people are out here making videos even making videos and saying good things and being able to rightly divide some of these things out there anybody could rightly divide some of those things out there but why people preach against someone being able to lose salvation or that their salvation may not be at no risk um, yeah it's at risk it's at risk out here if we were supposed not to do things 
because if we didn't, if we did do things that we weren't supposed to do, that would make us not only not a doer of the word, but that would also make us disobedient. And let me not forget, I mean, since I'm sitting here, I ain't got nothing better to do. At least let me pull out this Bible one more time and bring up that scripture thing. I know it's a study section. First, I'll read what it says in the Bible, and then I'll read the study section of this. I'm telling you, here it is. This is the this is the book that most Christians hate. But will thou know, o, o vain man, that faith without works is dead? Okay? That's like I said, this is the book that most Christians hate. I mean, these are the scriptures most Christians hate. Oh, yeah. Here's, here's what that little bit of sin. Here's what that little bit of sin. Okay, remember, it takes root. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bring forth death. So that's basically saying, if you start allowing sin into your life, see what happens. I'm talking one sin, and then thinking there's nothing wrong. Then it's again, and then it's again. Can't believe that one day... I sit here and talked about a scripture, opened up the Bible, and there's a scripture right there. The illustration of Abraham. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? See if thou how faith brought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called friend of God and that's because he obeyed God yea ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Book of Revelations right there. When you're talking about the church, people are going to have a rude awakening one day. So here's what the study section of this Bible says. 2.14 through 17. James does not advocate, advocate a works-based salvation. Works, workless faith and faithless works are equally dead. James' main concern is consistency of faith, evidenced by its fruit. True faith is active belief and active trust, which result in a changed life. The example here shows that action is necessary, otherwise words are empty. What use are words without obedience? James argues for a theological unity, faith and works. He essentially says faith with, without works is impossible. The way people see someone's faith is by how he or she lives it out. James, yeah, that's after the truth lives the truth out okay James emphasizes the uselessness of faith without its accompanying deeds by saying that even the devils believe in the triune God but they do not obey James points to the example of Abraham which actually I'm speaking some of that stuff was stuff that I didn't read but there was a point behind it James points to the 
James points to the example of Abraham who obeyed out of trust and belief in God. In the beginning of Abraham's narrative, he showed that he trusted God, his faith was made perfect as opposed to a hollow faith as a result of his obedience. Even the prostitute Rahab acted in obedience that resulted from trust and belief. Christians can find narratives throughout the Old Testament of people demonstrating that genuine faith is always accompanied by obedient actions. And even when, even before there was a day one day when I started saying that David Abraham Job Enoch you know they walked they were upright which is very important that's righteous uh that I even used Abraham as an example and then Abraham's used as an example two times in the New Testament and this is after I even brought up that I'm not even sure if I even knew that Abraham was brought up in the New Testament before I even brought up that hey Abraham was an example I guarantee you what God wants from us is the same as what he got from Abraham from the very beginning Yep. So, just like is someone saved without repentance? Does repentance save someone? But are they saved without? Nope. Repent or likewise perish. There you go. Oh, and yeah, that regeneration renewal of the mind, go to Romans 12 too. This is why so many Christians can't see the truth when it's right there in front of their face. Oh, there's other things in the Bible that can say, that can prove, that can point that out too. I know people out there know, probably know that scripture by heart, Romans 12, 2. The perfect will of God. Yeah. And be not conformed to this world, but yet be trans transformed by the renewing of the mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God that means that you have to have a regenerated mind and a renew regeneration and renewal of the mind for someone out here to make the right decisions why are Christians not making the right decision and then when I witnessed something the other day professing that this is the stuff that makes someone be born again, are people born again? I'm not going to answer that. What God offers is not mere improvement, but the radical transformation of sinners into saints sinners and the saints I know that's just a study section but something's wrong with the church allowing them to change their filthy rags of sin for the royal robes of righteousness in Christ holy living involves the body mind and spirit All right, man.
I think that's enough of this video. Now, what was I going to name this video? This, this, the seed Christians everywhere. I mean, I gotta. It's gotta be able to bling bling. It's gotta have some bling bling behind it. Yeah, I think I've already probably said that before in a video title. I don't think I got no bling bling behind it. Or, <laughs> yeah, that's enough of this video.